Gabriele Cangelopoulou, editor of Design Boom magazine, and I'm very happy to have with me on stage representatives of two historic French houses, uh, Joran Chapeau, CEO at Chapeau Creation, established with the mission to preserve and cherish the heritage of French furniture designer Pierre Chapeau, um, Yves Solomon, third generation and president of the eponymous luxury house since the 1970s, and Marcelin Boyer, head of merchandise and retail architect of architecture at Yves Solomon. And uh, under the topic of fashion and home in search of sustainable solutions, when know-how unites for a good cause, we are here to unpack the Two Houses First collaborative collection, which is also currently on view as part of Paris Design Week at 5 Rue de Castillon. I hope I said it right. <laughs> and um, I would like to start with a brief introduction of the Two Houses and uh, the culture of both Pierre Chapeau and Chapeau Creation and Yves Salomon and uh, a little bit of history. I don't know who would like to start. Yves Salomon is a family house. We started in uh, 1920. I'm the third generation. Uh, my son Thomas is the fourth. And uh, we initiated our life in the uh, trade of uh, raw material, specifically furs. And in uh, 20 years ago, we started to be a luxury brand. And uh, we are in the fashion, of course, world with uh, a woman collection, a man collection, and kid collection. And uh, maybe uh, uh, I will pass uh, the... Hello. So I, I'm the grandson of uh, Pierre Chapeau. Uh, he's a, a French designer who studied um, architecture at Les Beaux-Arts de Paris. And uh, after several travels where he was studying uh, architecture, he decided to open uh, a design shop in Paris with my grandma, where they were selling most of the iconic French design of that time. And um, his, um, his stepdad was a woodworker, and uh, Pierre Chapeau was designing all the time. So he had this conversation with his, with his stepdad uh, and started to uh, produce some, some furniture. He died in 87, and uh, the company stopped, stopped uh, producing in the 90s. But in 2005, my dad decided to uh, took over and start again uh, this company. So it's been uh, 20 years that we are making some re-edition of uh, all the different models of Pierre Chapeau. It was quite easy to start because we already had in South of France, in Gord, all the, um, the, the original workshop all the drawing, the design, and we even found some uh, woodworkers that used to work uh, with us back in the days. So, yeah, that's it. And um, so this is your first collaboration uh, on a collection of furniture with uh, the textiles, but how did the idea come about? Um, it started a few years ago. I mean, uh, I personally have a passion for vintage furniture, so I'm uh, buying regularly vintage furniture, and it happened that I'm living with Pierre Chapeau uh, furniture in my home. And uh, a couple of years ago, we did, uh, decided to, to start uh, an idea in the, in the furniture world because uh, it was also, it, I wanted to mix the passion of of uh, furniture and the passion of uh, fashion. And uh, we discussed with Marcelin uh, what was the kind of project we could do. And uh, it happened that uh, we found out that uh, Zoran Chapeau was reediting uh, the furniture of Pierre Chapeau. So uh, I think Marcelin will tell you the, the next step. So hello to all, and yes, it's a it's a funny story because when Mr. Solomon said to me uh, he want to do a, a furniture collection, I said maybe I, I have an idea um, because uh, I do project in my kitchen in this moment, and I have bought some pieces from uh, the Chapeau family, and Pierre Chapeau is a famous uh, uh, designer from the 60s, and Mr. Solomon said directly, wait, 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 uh, I know very well this uh, this uh, this designer because I have uh, some pieces in my kitchen too. And so I said, that's a funny story, and maybe I can call Zoran to do a, a, a project with, uh, with this company. And so uh, Zoran um, uh, can maybe uh, tell you the, the next steps. Yes, 
it's also the first time that we are doing a collaboration with another brand. And um, you, it is really great because for, for me in my daily life, sometimes it's quite frustrating because uh, of course we have more than 100 uh, different items from Pierre Chapeau, but they are always the same. We are not designing some new one. Uh, so it's been a couple of, it's, it's been uh, sometimes that I was looking some, for some ways to uh, show our furnitures from a different angle. And uh, when Marcelin contacted me, uh, they already had some, some ideas and it was like some really like colorful ideas like you, that you, like you discovered in, uh, in this collaboration. Um, so for us, it was a great opportunity. Thank you. And uh, I know you presented the collection for the first time earlier this year in Milan, but um, how long ago did you first start working on it? How was the, um, the process? Um, it was a, a very long process because um, the collaboration was born uh, one year before the, the launch in Milan at, uh, at uh, Salon del Mobile at Timore Studio. Uh, with many steps between the, the team of, uh, of uh, the Chapeau uh, family and uh, our craftsman team too. Um, and maybe want to, to add something, Zoran, for, for the, your part of the... Um, I mean, for, for us it was quite easy because we did like we always do, but we were always uh, in, in contact with the Yves Salomon yeah. team that have... The, 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 they uh, went through a lot of different uh, constraints, technical constraints. So it was um, a long process and a lot of discussion to, uh, to make uh, this piece uh, living. And uh, maybe you can walk us through the, the different pieces of the collection so we can uh, understand. What it was. So in the collection, we have 10 pieces, so um, three chairs uh, in, with the same patterns but different colors. So this is the uh, iconic chairs from the, the Chapeau family, from Chapeau Creation. Um, we have also, um, so this is the second color of the chairs. Um, and we have the armchair, uh, just one armchair with a unique color. Um, and this is exactly the same uh, know-how for uh, this armchair and the, 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 the chairs because uh, uh, you have um, different. So, oh, sorry. sorry, you have two um, two lamp, two and uh, one day bed. So ten pieces in all. The two lamp is in different size and different colors, but same patterns. And the day bed is unique. Uh, and uh, we produce just five day bed in the world. And uh, this is unique patterns and um, for the day bed and unique colors. Yeah, this. This day bed was designed as the masterpiece of the collaboration. And uh, it's, it's cool because it's also the first ever uh, Pierre Chapeau furniture. It's called Le Lit Godot. Um, it has been um, uh, ordered by uh, the writer Samuel Beckett to Pierre Chapeau. He wanted to create a bed, and Pierre Chapeau designed uh, this bed. So it's the Lit Godot, and it's the first ever uh, Pierre Chapeau uh, furniture. And sorry, yes, three stools in different size <laughs> and uh, different colors, uh, but uh, with the same pattern. I have, to say, I have to say the inspiration of this pattern is, is coming, of course, from the coffee table, uh, the coffee table which is iconic from uh, Pierre Chapeau. And um, I know that both houses have worked over decades to develop a lot of techniques and craftsmanship um, expertise with artisans, but um, I was wondering if you can expand a little bit on what kind of expertise did each house contribute to make this collection um, come to life? So the, the special techniques that you employed and... Uh... Um, I think the, the most difficult was uh, the, the chair. Um, the, the original chair is uh, with, um, uh, with leather, which is like really thick, and then uh, the leather is stretched, is stretched on, uh, on the chair. But for this collaboration, we decided to use lamb, which is a skin which is much more thin. So uh, we, 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 we had to find the, the way to um, work with the softness of the lamb, but uh, to have something uh, solid to hold uh, a chair. 
I have to say, this is was a huge challenge because uh, a luxury brand, we are uh, used to uh, do soft and uh, fluffy, light, uh, shiny garments. And this is absolutely the contrary. It has to be uh, solid, uh, durable, uh, it has to be strong. And uh, we have to, to face this issue with our workshop. I have to say that uh, we have a culture of creation in our workshops so because a fashion line has to be done uh, twice a year at minimum. So our team is very young, it's about 30 years old in average. And uh, people were super excited to learn new techniques and to find, uh, a ch to fight this challenge and uh, to find a way out to all the problems that we had. And we found quite creative solutions. Uh, I have to say we are using the intarsia technique. The intarsia technique is a classical uh, technique in the, uh, in the fashion industry, especially fur and shearling. And uh, as uh, Zoran said, we had some issue because uh, it has to be uh, strong and solid. But uh, we wanted to, to cope with this problem and uh, we had to, to solve this issue. Maybe Marcela can explain a little bit more how we, we yeah. went through. Yeah, so for, for our part, we have developed the technique of Intersia um, for this project. So the Intersia technique is very close to the marquetry for the wood but for, uh, for the fur or for the leather uh, or the shelling. So as you can see on the picture behind us, um, you can see all the pattern is not printed or it's not tufting or anything. It's real uh, shelling piece cut by, well, one by one by hand. And uh, these pieces of shelling are isoned one by one and by hand to do the pattern. So it's clearly like marquetry, but for, for the shelling. And it's called Intersia. And uh, I, I have to say that uh, Yves Salomon is very demure, but they are, they are known to be the best in the world for, for this technique. So I was really confident when, uh, when they told me that they wanted to use this technique for the collaboration. Thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, all the fabrics that were used were upcycled um, scraps or things that were not... Um, usable in, in other parts, but I was wondering about the fabrics and the patterns that you chose and how you developed those and whether you worked with what was available or if you had some material and color combinations from the start and you looked for, for those. I'm personally quite involved in uh, durable uh, missions. So uh, we developed many years ago a line called pieces, which using all the, the leftover we have to understand that uh, when we make a garment, uh, the garment must be perfect in terms of color, uh, height of uh, hair, uh, uh, quality, lightness. And uh, whatever it doesn't fit, it, what is very good quality, but has to be uh, left over. And uh, the challenge to, is to use all these leftovers, which are beautiful quality and... Uh, and uh, is, it's a continuation of our, in our culture of uh, creation and using this, all these crafts and material which are left over. And then regarding all the patterns, maybe I can uh, let Marcel explain a little bit. Yes, so for, for the inspiration of the pattern, it's very eclectic. So um, you have a mix of, uh, for, for, the, for the motif for, uh, by the um, uh, Secession Vienna, Vienna Secession, sorry, so uh, Hoffman, um, Joseph Hoffman, uh, Weiner Werkstatt, uh, a little mix with, uh, we can see on the armchair, like uh, aquarium painting, so the Bloomsbury group. And so it's very big gap uh, from uh, all, the, um, all the movement because uh, for the association of color, uh, we have an inspiration more from the 80s uh, for, uh, from uh, Ettore Sotsas and Memphis because uh, uh, for this project, we want a real dynamic furniture and a real modern furniture. And when you do an association with uh, the shelling and the, the elm, it can be more um, mountain uh, furniture aspect, and we don't want that. So we have mixed uh, this pattern with very dynamic colors. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, I know you talked a little bit about the, the challenge that uh, you faced during the 
putting the two materials together, but um, was there something new that you discovered that you think that you'll be able to use again somehow in the production in the future? Um, some kind of expertise that was exchanged and is sort of... Um, for example, on our side, I was quite surprised because, well, we are two uh, family French houses which cultivate uh, the French... Uh, um, uh, how do you say? Work, uh, craftsmanship, sorry. And um, we both have um, a workshop which are in France, where in South of France, their workshops are in Paris. And um, for, on our side, for example, we discovered like, some technique that we didn't know. So for the chairs, we like exactly this. The, the ropes, they, um, the Yves Salomon team found some, some new ropes which are like way more beautiful. Uh, same for odd, some other little things. And uh, thanks to that, we will use uh, these new materials uh, in, the, in the future. And uh, in our part, um, a new technique was born because, um, as I said, Mr. Solomon and, and Zoran, um, the, the shelling is very soft material. And you can't use uh, directly the shelling to do a, a seat. It's impossible because it's so soft. So our craftsman team uh, have developed um, um, a three-layer technique. So in front, you can see the intersia, so the marquetry of shelling. And inside the seat, you, can, you, you have a, a co-leaser for the structure, a strong co-leaser. And to do uh, exactly the same uh, pattern of the front, we have developed exactly the, the same pattern, but in lamb leaser for the back seat. So, I don't know if we, we have some picture from the, from the back, but it's really beautiful because you can see um, all the detail of the pattern, but in lamb leather, and it's very beautiful finishing. So, yeah. Yes, on the right, you can see uh, the, the back of the armchair, and all is in lamb leather. And it's, uh, so it's two intersia, it's not the, the back of the shelling. You have inside a collisor, so it's a new technique from the, from the, the Yves Salomon rear arrows uh, for, for do, to do furniture with intersia. Yeah, just uh, to, to resume, we have to find a way to mix uh, softness and uh, delicate with uh, strongness. And that, that was the biggest challenge. And um, as, uh, as I said before, but we are not used to do furniture, so we had to learn all this. And uh, that took about one year to learn the techniques, to develop them, and to exchange uh, daily with uh, the Ron Chapeau to see if it worked or not. And uh, the final result uh, gave us a, a really a great uh, satisfaction and the, the will to, uh, to continue to develop in that uh, direction. I think it's been very successful. And actually, my next question was whether this collaboration was a one-off experiment or if you're thinking of continuing somehow into each other's worlds or into the world of furniture for Yves Salomon and the world of fabrics for Chapo Creation. Um, for, for this collection, we decided to, um, to do a, a, li a limited edition. Uh, so it's a one-shot, but we want uh, the collection to uh, continue to live. So we are going to, uh, to show it uh, in New York at the Magen H Gallery uh, in November. And, um, and on my side, um, as I said before, uh, it's really exciting to, um, to see uh, our furniture from a different angle. So in the future, yes, I think I want that to um, um, do some other collaboration um, on this way here. On our side, I think there is a, a natural bridge between fashion and furniture. So uh, this is maybe a new trend, in, uh, and I would say now uh, most uh, luxury brands are developing their home lines. And uh, Yves Salomon, of course, uh, will do the same, because uh, there is one word to start is passion, and my own passion, and the passion of the team to, to do a new development. And we feel that this bridge is uh, quite exciting for the team and uh, we have great possibilities and of course for sure we'll continue and uh, with Doran 
possibly uh, with new projects and maybe other projects and other, other collaborations. And uh, it's for sure the beginning of a, of a long story and uh, we are s extremely excited about this, uh, this new development. Uh, Marceline also has heard of retail architecture. Um, do you find this mix of interiors and fashion somehow more? Um, maybe, I don't know, for the moment, uh, we don't uh, put some chapeau pieces on uh, our, our uh, boutique, but uh, we love uh, vintage pieces. We, we buy many pieces from, uh, for our, our boutique, uh, like uh, the next boutique uh, with uh, vintage Japanese furniture. And I don't know, but maybe it can be really interesting. And we love the, the, the chapeau uh, work, so maybe, yeah. Um, and I also wanted to talk about sustainability because it's also part of the, of the topic. And I wanted to ask how this idea fits into your creative process for, for both houses and how you envision the future in terms of whether it's in fashion or interiors when it comes to designing sustainably, what that means to each of you. Um, it's because it's a very broad term, but somehow it's also very urgent to, to come up with solutions around it. Uh, about sustainability, uh, on, the, on the Chapeau side, um, uh, it was really important for, for Pierre Chapeau to make furniture that, that lasts. Uh, and um, I think it works. It works when you see uh, all the furniture that uh, on the on the vintage markets. Uh, we are making furniture that, that lasts over time. Um, the the fact that doing um, a collaboration and see the the furniture from from a different way for me it's also a way to be in the sustainability because we are reusing um, uh, the furniture, but uh, we're giving. Uh, we are giving a second life by um, um, revisiting them, and um, and also about the the matter we are using wood. And uh, when when you work uh, with a noble material like this, you have you have to respect it. So in a workshop, uh, we always try to make as less as possible of uh, of uh, falls and uh, and leftovers. And I'm sure that uh, if Salomon is doing the same. Uh, we, in the beginning, we were very excited having a, a collaboration with a, a company having workshop in France, specifically in Gord, and uh, our workshops are in, are in Paris. And uh, we think that the promoting uh, uh, craftsmanship is the first part of sustainability. The second part is to use noble materials, natural materials. This is a real luxury. And uh, this is the culture of our brand. And uh, of course, wood was the perfect match to uh, shearling and leather, and, uh, which are all natural materials. And uh, of course, wood, as Zoran said, uh, is uh, quite durable. And uh, the chapeau style is, is uh, as you can, uh, as you know, is quite uh, stiff and, uh, and um, geometrical. And uh, we are bring the softness, the colors, and uh, and a little bit of femininity. And it was super exciting to go in that direction. Sustainability is coming also from the reuse of leftover materials. As I said before, we have a lot of leftovers. So it's a challenge not to use new material. And uh, we really uh, want to continue in that direction. Sustainability is uh, using as a minimal uh, material, especially expensive one and natural. And we will continue in that direction. And this is a perfect project of uh, sustainability, I think. Yeah, it's, and it's nice to, um, to see, uh, like for this project, the sustainability uh, became also um, a way to, to design. So they use this interstitial technique because they are the best in the world to do it, but also because they had some leftovers, so it's some little piece of, uh, of skin. And from that, this constraint, uh, it became a help to make some new design. Uh, but also when you design f 
fashion lines and collections, do you still upcycle some some fabrics or? Well, it is our culture uh, to do upcycling. We we launched uh, maybe ten years ago a line called Pieces, which is uh, based on the same uh, philosophy of reusing material and scraps and leftovers. And uh, in our production, of course, we we try to be uh, super conscious using. Uh, Net, um, animals and uh, so we we want to be extremely conscious about using and reusing material. We have to know, I mean, uh, because uh, it's not very well known that, uh, of course, shearling and fur uh, are the only uh, material in the fashion industry which are reusable. It means that when you do a coat, you can recut it, you can reuse it. So uh, fur and shearling are by nature uh, sustainable materials. And uh, we develop also uh, in our brand uh, the possibility in our workshops to, to bring coats uh, or, and to turn them into new coats or, new, or to, into uh, 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 furniture pieces like uh, percussions or, or straws. Or, I mean, these materials give a huge possibility and long life. And this is, I think, the base of sustainability. Um, and that chapeau creation, besides using wood, which is a very long-lasting material, do you have also some um, principles like maybe only designing by order or not mass-producing things and somehow like this also playing into the idea of, of sustainably like producing things? That um, It's really important for us to um, stay in France. So we are trying to uh, work with um, some local um, local matter, like the the oak uh, is is coming from from France. Uh, we have a workshop uh, in France, and we want to 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 stay like that. And uh, of course, we want to uh, to develop, but um, um, we yes, we are going to stay uh, ma made to order furniture, and uh, everything is made by hand. For example, we are not. Uh, using the, the new uh, wood machine that are almost uh, making a furniture uh, li like this. Um, we are using the old machine with the old techniques, and uh, we also want to uh, transmit this, um, um, these techniques to some new people. We also have uh, no, a, a young team, and uh, there was a lot of, um, of uh, French woodworkers, uh, young French woodworkers uh, that, uh, that are coming up and uh, and uh, it's a, it's a chance to 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 work with them and to uh, to give us this heritage and uh, we want of course to make it uh, last for for a long time thank you um, yeah uh, maybe if there's nothing else to add uh, we can open the the floor to questions if there's something from the audience Someone? <laughs> I may add something. Uh, what was super exciting in this project is we found out that we have exactly, being in two different worlds, but we have exactly the same culture, the culture of uh, craftsmanship and, and the, craft, the culture of uh, family house. And the idea of the real luxury is to uh, produce uh, small quantities which are of exceptional pieces. And uh, I think we, we found a, a total match together. Uh, uh, and this project, uh, I think, is a, is a good experience of two French houses uh, working together and having the same culture, the same ideas, and meeting with their own uh, know-how, their own techniques, and uh, upcycling them and pushing them to the, to the maximum to give the the most exclusive pieces, and this is why it's a limited edition. We are not going to produce uh, more than uh, five beds and ten chairs. And uh, this is why we, we, we are really, again, in the sustainable world. OK. Oui. Euh, Yves et Zoran, est-ce que vous pourriez imaginer de 
Eve. Okay. Can you imagine to sort of turn the thing around and have your expertise of chapeau and your woodworking expertise helping Yves Salomon to create their own furniture line? Meaning now it's chapeau and you have the covers by Yves Salomon. Could you imagine to turn it around and have sort of your expertise and something that design that originates from Yves Salomon? Thank you for this question. Uh, we never thought about it. It's interesting. Um, I think the, the, the interesting chapeau uh, expertise is uh, uh, the, the, the joint of the, of the wood. Uh, Pierre Chapeau was a, a bit crazy and he loved uh, you know, mind game, but the physical ones, puzzles and stuff like this. And um, of course, if, if Salomon and uh, Marcelin, I mean like all the team, wants to um, create their own furniture, maybe we could think something around that using, uh, using the technique of Chapeau, which are actually, uh, most of them, they are pat patent. So, so there is this joint for the chairs that there is in this collaboration, but uh, there is also, you know, the, the stools with uh, three legs that are, that are crossed, and uh, it's, it's also an expertise that we have. So we could imagine uh, some pieces that are using uh, these, uh, these techniques, yes? I have a scoop. I mean, uh, Zoran is going to live in Paris, and Marcelin and myself, we move to Gord. That would be fun. <laughs> You're welcome. But uh, actually, it's interesting like, to imagine maybe applying the, the techniques of, I don't know, the wood joinery in some kind of fabric rendition. Could be something to explore. <laughs> but for sure. I mean, we spent one year learning uh, new techniques of furniture. And uh, of course, um, as Zoran said, and what we really like in uh, in chapeau is the joint without screws and uh, and, uh, and no no metal in the in the wood, and uh, and it's it's quite uh, uh, exciting to to go into that direction because we are using the same techniques in the in the fashion uh, world, and of course uh, I think it's the first step and uh, learning these techniques uh, and learning what uh, Zoran taught us uh, and what we learned from the furniture of course uh, we can reuse it uh, to make new furniture on one side and on the other side also uh, we use it for fashion uh, design in the future and uh, this is why a collaboration is, is, is very uh, is, is very rich and, uh, and helpful to the development of, uh, of uh, small companies like ours. Actually, Marcelin is designing some furniture already for, for Yves Salomon. He, he designs uh, some, well, I, I can let you talk about it. Yeah, yeah but ju just for the architecture, so it's uh, not furniture uh, to sell, but uh, yeah, yeah, we do. All, the f all our boutiques uh, are produced with uh, our design of furniture and uh, design of, uh, of all the boutique uh, uh, are designed in our office, so yes, uh, but uh, uh, I can't wait to, to, to design uh, the, the, the furniture for, for Yves Salomon uh, and um, not just for the boutique, but uh, for, uh, for a, a, new, uh, a new way, I hope. Good. Is it also a scoop? <laughs> a lot of scoops today. Maybe. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Yeah, it was, it was very interesting. Any more questions? Maybe we can close it up here if you <laughs> thank you very thank much thank you so much it was very insightful and um, if you haven't seen it yet go see it in Paris um, I don't know if I say the street name right Rue de Castiglione Saint Rue de Castiglione <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming and uh, if, if you want to see uh, 
the piece in real. They're not here, but uh, in Rue Castiglione. And uh, if Salomon did a, a great job there, they, uh, they created um, a, a workshop in an apartment with the, with the workers uh, uh, of Yves Salomon. And uh, they are doing a tour there where they show you all the techniques that you, that you have seen uh, on, the, on the pictures. So you are really welcome uh, to come. And thank you very much for, for coming today. And uh, yes, uh, the Rue Castiglione, it's um, a beautiful showroom. And you can see uh, in the first uh, room uh, all the warehouse with the craftsmen of Yves Salomon. And uh, you can see all the technique of the Intercia step by step. It's very interesting. And that is on view until the 12th of September, right? Uh, on the 13, 13 sorry, September yes. 13. Great. Thank you very much, and uh, you're quite welcome to in our showroom. And thank you for your patience. Thank you. Thank you.